No. <laughs> you gonna put your face all in the camera? You are hilarious, little girl. Say hi. Oh, people love you. Hello, everybody. Not like you gotta move, girl, so I can record. Hello, everybody, here for um, Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 8, episode 10, I believe this was. This was a really, really good episode. Um, I want to double check and make sure it is episode 10. But um, this was a really good episode because it was, you know, I like when, when shows are, um, okay, girl, go play. I like when shows actually show, instead of the character of the person, like, you know, the character that they portray. No. Come on. Let me record. Instead of the character that they portray on the show, I really like that they show real life on um, on some of these reality shows. So, we'll get into, we'll get into that. Um, it started with Candy and Mama Joyce, and they're looking... For baby stuff for um candy's baby candy's like you know she's so she's so um she's busy with her business ventures she hasn't had time to um set up the baby's room prepare for the baby in any way so her and mama joyce are in you know like the um like a baby store and they're just looking for cribs and all of that and um, Mama Joyce is like, so have you spoken to Phaedra? Is she going to help you plan your baby shower and stuff like this? And Candy is like, well, we've spoken, but it's just been, you know, it's been a little tense because um, I was told that she was talking about me and Todd at the, um, talking about me and Todd at our video release um, party because Don Juan, Don Juan um, heard it. So, you know, Mama Joyce is like, well, you know, I you guys used to be so close. I really want you guys to get back to that and be friends again. So I may speak to Phaedra because I don't want you speaking to Phaedra. I don't want I don't want anybody to upset you in any way since your pregnancy is high risk. So Candy was like, well, I'm not letting anybody stress me. Give me this. She's like, I'm not letting anybody stress me at all because, you know, it's 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 not that serious. And I have other things to do. So. You know, Mama Joyce was like, well, I'll go and I'll speak to her. So Candy was like, well, I really wouldn't want you speaking to her either because, you know, you, you just made up with everybody that you had problems with um, years ago. So it's like every time, you know, every time something, we all know, every time something happened with Mama Joyce, it was always messy. But, you know, she she's really worked on this since Todd's mom passed away. And, you know, I'm happy for them. But um, Mama Joyce is just like, I just want to know what happened between you guys. Like, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to say anything wrong. I just want to find out where you guys went wrong and see what I can do to help. So um, the next scene, I think, was um, Noel and Cynthia and Cynthia's packing for her trip with Peter. Peter said, get dressed, you know, start packing because we're going to have a good time. So this is their way of having a little couple's trip and getting out and rekindling their romance which is good every couple needs something like this you need a week or a weekend to go out to just be a unit again and i'm happy for cynthia and peter like getting over the embarrassment of that video that was floating around on social media I'm happy for Cynthia and Peter that they're working it out. They're not quitting on each other. They're, you know, giving their marriage another chance. So good for them. Um, what else happened? <laughs> Kenya meets up with her aunt, and her aunt. Oh, you okay? Kenya meets up with her aunt and her assistant Brandon, and they're in Detroit. And Kenya is in Detroit for a family reunion that was thrown by her paternal aunt. So Kenya's mission is to just get her family together um, for the trip um, and whatnot. Right. And they're visiting, yeah. you know, different areas of Detroit and, you know, discussing the, um, the situation as far as getting the family together. I'm not going to go too in-depth of what they were discussing just yet because I want to save Kenya for last for a main reason. So... Mama Joyce goes to visit um, Phaedra, um, 
and she just asking her like very briefly like you know what's what happened with you and candy or whatever and you know phaedra is like well you know me and candy are good but i just feel like the situation at her video release party was blown out of proportion because don juan made it bigger than what it was she was like i know me and candy have had our issues but you know i still consider her best friend i want to be there she was there for me when i had my babies i want to be there for her when she has her baby so you know they kind of like switched off topic but i noticed like when mama joyce is asking her questions like it was a very awkward silence when they were talking but I did notice that when Mama Joyce asked the questions about Candy, she was just like, you know, brushing it off a little bit. But I mean, Phaedra has good reason to because Phaedra kind of feels like she doesn't really want to discuss it with anybody else but Candy. So um, they switched the subject from that to Candy's baby shower. And Phaedra's like, well, you know how I am. I love big extravagant events. And so, you know, they're trying to figure out ideas for Candy's baby shower. And Phaedra came up with the idea to um, play off of candy and todd's wedding and do it like a coming to america theme but call it coming to atlanta so mama joy said that she'll leave phaedra to plan it and whatnot and i think that would be cool because phaedra is like the ultimate i mean a lot of phaedra's events be over the top but it wouldn't be phaedra if it wasn't over the top since phaedra came on real housewives of atlanta her events have been over the top so um what else happened i'm trying to see if i got everybody because like oh portia portia and her sister now i was kind of upset with portia for how she was talking to her sister but then i kind of understood why yeah, yeah. so um portia meets up with her sister portia's working out with her trainer first of all let me say her trainer is fine he is brolic and he's fine <laughs> but anyway yeah like he's he's a really good trainer they're doing like these different like these up close and personal like um exercises like they were I mean, she was doing sit-ups on his back um he had her sit indian style and he would lift her and like them those are like some extreme exercises but i'm like i think that's good that he's training her like that because it's different and you know it'll help with her car it'll help with her um like it'll help her with her weight it'll help her with her like her cardio all of that like these are like different exercises he had her doing i'm like these are very creative like it, this is stuff i've never seen before so um lauren comes and you know she was gonna um lauren comes and she's you know supposed to work out with portia but she says she's not feeling too well so they sit and they talk and while they're talking um portia is just like um i feel like yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Push is just like I feel like you know you're slacking off as my assistant. Um, there's a lot that's going on with my business, and I really need your help. But um, if you're not available to help me, then maybe it's not a good idea for you to work anymore or something like that. Or like she was like, you know, um, you can't work from home. I need you at the office because when stuff is at the office, it's getting the packages are getting missed or whatever and you know lauren is just like well if i had more help in the office then you know packages wouldn't be missed so lauren is basically telling portia you need to be more hands-on with your companies portia doesn't really like how that sounds because she depends on lauren to help her with her businesses understandable but portia you have to keep in mind that she is pregnant all sorts of crazy things are going on in her body from her head to her toes it's not just your belly it's your hormones it's your body temperature it's your mood it's you know blood flow it's it's everything everything when you're pregnant those nine months your body goes through it because your body is now trying to like especially if it's your first pregnancy your body is now trying to recognize okay well she's pregnant so we have to shift and we have to do this that and this that to um accommodate this baby you know so i wasn't mad at lauren for saying what she was saying i was mad at portia for how she was talking to her because i feel like portia should be a little bit more understanding of how what lauren is going through and portia it's just like, do you even want a job? Do you want to be here? And I'm like, 
Portia, you can't ask her that. The girl is like, she's pregnant and she's in the beginning stages of her pregnancy. What she really doesn't need is your stress and your, your nagging when she's trying to do a job while being with child. So, um, when they, when they met up again, like they started arguing and, you know, Lauren was basically telling Portia, I feel like you're selfish. I feel like you don't understand what I'm going through. I feel like you just want me to be all about Portia and I can't be all about Portia when I have all of this going on with me. So Portia is like something about, she says something about, I don't need you nagging or something like that about what's going on in your stomach and all that. And I'm like, geez. So Lauren feels resentment towards Portia because she feels like Portia is all about Portia. Portia, even though she's not going to admit it, feels resentment towards Lauren because Lauren is having, like, Lauren has her dream. Lauren has the baby that's coming. Lauren has a relationship that Portia wants, possibly. So I feel like Portia was wrong for saying what she said. And she has to be very sensitive to her sister and what her sister is going through right now. And also, Portia has to get over that resentment because her sister has nothing to do with the resentment that she feels. You didn't fail, Portia. Right now, it's time for you to shine and for you to get your career on. And after your career, will come a husband and a baby. So you need to be a little bit sensitive to your sister and what she's going through. So I really didn't like this scene with Portia and her sister. But what I did like is that they did hash it out. And Lauren just basically asked her, you know, are you jealous of me right now? Because do you feel like I'm living the life that you want? And Portia is like, no, I'm not jealous. You know, I live a really good life right now. I'm just, I, you know, I do want a baby and I do want a husband and child. But my life right now, I have to deal with, you know, the cards that I'm dealt. So I'm dealing with it. I kind of felt like Portia was in a little bit of denial. She should have been, uh, that was her moment to be honest with her sister and say, hey, I'm sorry for coming off as a bitch. I am feeling a little bit of, you know, jealousy because you're having a baby and I I need you with me right now. And now that you won't be with me always at my beck and call, you know, it's bothering me. If she would have said that to her sister, it probably went, you know, the conversation would have probably been a lot better. And her sister could have been like, okay, well, I understand how you feel, you know? So, all right. Um, they basically hashed it out or whatever. Now, Kenya. What I really liked about this episode is that they showed and they told the reason why Kenya's mother is the way that she is and why Kenya acts the way that she does. Because we all know that Kenya is like bat-ish crazy. We already know that. Kenya is very attention-starved and we know that. And I've seen ever since she joined the cast that the reason why she's the way she is is because she hasn't had a relationship with her mom. So... The attention and the love and all of that that she's seeking, she's seeking it in the wrong people. And she's trying to get that from her mom, from her from her mom's side of the family, you know. So, um, Kenya met up with her dad and her stepmother and um, her nephew. And they were just discussing the family. And when Kenya ran away from Detroit, from, from Texas to Detroit... And she said it, it brought a strain between her and her dad, but she's glad that they were able to reconcile. And um, when they were on the bus going through Detroit, just um, sightseeing and whatnot, they were talking about Kenya's mother. Now, um, Kenya's mother and father had her when they were like in their teens. She said 15 and 16. So... She said that at three days old, her mother wanted to give up for adoption, but her grandmother begged and pleaded with her mother, don't give her up for adoption, I'll take care of her. So her mother gave her to her grandmother, and her grandmother raised her ever since. So, Kenya said since she was younger, um, her mother has acted like she didn't know Kenya, she's pretended like Kenya didn't exist, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, Kenya has basically tried everything from when she was a little girl to 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 um reconnect with her mom and to no avail her mom doesn't care to even acknowledge that she's her child and she's her mother so um Kenya knows where her mother lives and she tells the driver to pull up to turn down a certain street so when she gets there she knocks on the door and she's like hi it's Kenya I'd like to talk to you 
and she said that she heard someone say, oh, don't open the door. And then they locked the door. And she's like, I can hear you. Just open the door and, you know, talk to me. I'd like to talk to you. So her mother never opened the door. Uh-oh. So her mother never opened the door. So Kenya. Girl. Oh, yeah. Play with that. Play that. Sorry. <laughs> so um, Kenya gets back in the bus and she's basically telling her, her family, um, I heard her in the house and I know she's home. I heard her tell someone, don't open the door. And she locked the door in my face. So, I mean, before that even happened, they were discussing the reason why her mother has been ignoring her. And it was said that the reason why, because Kenya's grandfather would tell his kids, I don't want any more illegitimate babies in this house. Basically meaning, you know, if you're not married and if you're not with the person you have the baby with, then you can't bring no baby in the house. So Kenya's mother has basically, you know, disowned Kenya and, you know, tossed Kenya aside just to please her father. And it's sad that that's like a, it's like a generational thing. You know, Kenya's dad, I mean, Kenya's grandfather would have disowned his kids if they brought in babies in the house. Kenya's mother disowned Kenya just of getting good with her dad. But in, in the process, she's ruined her daughter. And now, now Kenya has all these abandonment issues and, and, you know, craving attention and all this other stuff. Like Kenya has like serious issues, emotional issues. So, um, Kenya's dad was just basically laying it all out there for her. Like, yeah, it's been done to me. She, I've, tried to um reconnect with her and and whatnot and she won't open the door for me so you know and i'm like you know what this is really really sad this is sad that's a damage cycle and now i understand why kenya acts the way that she does because mm. look at how her mother treats her and so it like the the last scene was really kenya reconnecting with her father's side of the family because she you know extended the olive branch to her mother's side of the family wow. and the only person that even bothered to come from that side of the family was her Aunt Lori. But when they got there, they noticed that Aunt Lori wasn't there. So one of Kenya's family members pulled her to the side and was like, hey, um, Lori left because your sister called her and was like, um, oh, Kenya was here or whatever. And Kenya was like, yeah, I was there and I'm trying to get her to open the door. She would not open the door. She locked the door in my face and I heard her tell someone don't open the door. So... I guess that upset Aunt Lori and then she left or something like that. So Kenya was like, you know what? I've done everything. I'm not, I'm not trying anymore. You know, I give up. I've tried. I've tried to reach out. I've tried to talk to you. You don't want to talk to me. That's fine. So, you know, she was just the, uh, her cousin or whoever it was that was with her was like, listen, you got so many people in this room that love you. Don't even worry about it. Just focus on those who love you. And in time, maybe things will change and we'll see what happens. So, um, it basically ended on that note and, you know, it, it was a pretty good episode and my opinion is because, um, I know spilling all the tea, <laughs> he said, you know, I live for these real moments and I told him, I said, yes, let's get some sanity in this circus because sometimes, you know, shows can get so ratchet and so shady that you forget that these are actual people with real life issues going on. So for them to show this and we finally see more of Kenya's backstory and we finally understand more of why she acts the way she Yay! is, I appreciate it. Now I got to know the real Kenya, not the, the, the person she portrays on Real Housewives of Atlanta. The person, you know, real and raw. I get to see who she is, you know, really. And I mean, I really feel bad for her, like. I don't really, I don't like Kenya, I don't like her, her character, but, and I don't like her ways sometimes, but I can say that I really truly feel sorry for her, that she's going through this with her mom, but at least she Yay. has her dad there, at least she has her stepmother, at least she has people there who love her and who are going to take good care yeah. of her and make sure everything is fine as far as she goes. So Kenya should be happy. You know, she even said she's blessed. She said she doesn't feel like this is the way she, this isn't the way that she wanted the family reunion to go, but she's blessed that it went, you know, positively and that it went, 
it went great. It didn't go left. So I applaud them for showing this. But um, next episode like, is going to be good. Um, Nene comes back next episode. Oh, Lord. So we'll see how that goes. But, yeah, that was Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 8, Episode 10. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. And I'll see you guys next video. Thank you so much for watching. Later.